Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial. This video is a comparison of an example coming from the wood design manual and the software. We will run through the same example using the software right after demonstrating how the tables in the wood design manual works. We will now demonstrate example 3, glue lamp column, located at page 164 from the wood design manual 2017. Using the following conditions, which are a respective specified dead and snow load of 1.5 kPa and 3.5 kPa, a 30 square meter tributary area, dry conditions and untreated, we must determine if the 7 meter spruce pine glue lamp column with 175 by 228 millimeters cross section dimension can resist the specified loads. It is important to mention that the column is effectively pinned at both ends and braced at mid height in the narrow dimension as shown in the figure from the example problem. Because of the way the member is braced, the slenderness ratio for the y-axis would be determined based on half the mid-height of the column since there is bracing at the center along the weak axis of the column. The justification for still using the selection tables in the wood design manual is as follows. Buckling about the x-axis is the governing case. Therefore, since the effective column length in the direction of buckling is equal to the total column length, the column selection tables may be used. If this wasn't true, the selection tables could not be used for this problem. In order to determine the total factored load applied to the structure, we will use the load combination number 2, which is the critical load combination. By multiplying this with the 30 square meter tributary area, we obtain a total factored load of 214 kilonewtons. Since the slenderness ratio is governed by the entire height of the column, you would grab the resisting force from the selection tables based on the full height of the 175 by 228 millimeter column, which is 7 meters. If the member was less slender and governed by the slenderness ratio of the other direction which is braced, then the selection tables would not be applicable and a more detailed analysis using the CSA 086 would be required. This type of additional analysis can quickly and efficiently be completed in the Woodwork Sizer software. The selected beam properties would resist a factored load up to 217 kN in our case, so it would be appropriate. So, in the software, to recreate this example, the question is what edge do you specify lateral supporting spacing on? To brace the y-axis, you provide lateral support on the width B. The lateral support spacing is in millimeters, so you would input 3500 millimeters to recreate the lateral support conditions from the example in the wood design manual. I would recommend when doing this to run through the program with lateral support about either the width or the depth, so that you feel comfortable with how the software inputs work for lateral stability calculations of columns. There is a link to the example file in the description of the video that has been saved until here. It is now time to add loads and run the design. Since Sizer only considers specific loads when entering the magnitude of the load, we will enter 45 kilonewtons dead load and 105 kilonewtons snow load. Once we run the design, the software will automatically factor these loads following the load cases in part 4 of the NBC. For this example, we will turn off the automatic self-weight option so that the loads are consistent between the example problem from the wood design manual and the results from the software. When you go to the design results, you see the capacity of the column matches that from the wood design manual for the axial D and that the slenderness ratios are reported for each axis of the member in the calculation section. The axial B criteria does not govern the design because its slenderness ratio is less than the axial D criteria. The compressive strength for the B axis of the member is calculated using the reduced slenderness ratio based on half the height of the column. The reported resistance is exact and it would not be possible to determine the resistance using only the selection tables in the wood design manual.